Hey everybody, this is Carl with Trilobite Studios, and today I am here with... Josh. And we are going to be talking about the ethics of resurrecting prehistoric mammals uh, that are... Well, just pre prehistoric animals in general that are extinct, specifically in reference to uh, when scientists... Or how it's been going around for a long time now that scientists have been working on a mammoth resurrection project. Um... So I'm just going to open up the floor and uh, say, what are your thoughts in general? And then I guess we can kind of dissect the uh, the arguments one way or another. To be honest, uh, as much as I would love to see a woolly mammoth or any pre prehistoric uh, animal, I guess, in f the flesh, I honestly think it's a bad idea. Really? Yep. I'm surprised. Why? Uh, well, the animal in question uh, will be totally in, held in captivity right there's really no uh knowledge on how the animal interacted uh with its own species or the environment exactly it's all speculation and the just the freaking cost of it will be astronomical okay so what about like the uh the idea where they were talking about re-releasing or if they were to accomplish this they were going to release uh mammoths back into like siberia to turn the earth and turn it back into the grasslands that it used to be before the mammoth extinction to be honest a bad idea really yes okay lay, um, it, lay it on me bro Explain okay me. so you first the fact that we have to make a mammoth yeah uh, closest, I believe, uh, modern elephants is the Asian uh, subspecies. Right. So if we were to produce a mammoth, it would be through a Asian surrogate mother. Mm -hmm. Then you have to get enough hot population just to produce to be able to release them into the wild. Now, in South Africa, in the 90s or 80s, uh, they ha they did a culling of elephants and then they sold the calves to other game parks. Well, come to find out, that doesn't actually work really well because you need adult elephants to teach the younger elephants how to be elephants. Right. So, in order for them to properly integrate um, into the environment... Right, become adjusted. Uh, you're, there's not going to be that uh, parental figure... Now, the females will probably be fine. Right. Uh, once they, you know, start uh, establishing herds and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's the males that are going to cause the problems. Okay. One, once a uh, elephant becomes sexually mature, or just before that, they get kicked out of the herd. Yeah. Well, when he goes into a thing called musk, which yeah. is their breeding season, they're not going to have someone uh, to basically tell them to shut up and sit down. Yeah. Uh, when that happens. So you're going to have these young bull mammoths running around full of testosterone and running into possibly cities or something that cause problems. And plus, you're going to have giant walking ivory tusk out there. You don't I mean, think that's going to be a, a big target for uh, those people that, poaching. you know, poaching? I mean, we already do in the form of elephants. And I think that... I think that the morals, like, all my moral compasses are telling me that this probably isn't a good idea, but as far as, like, scientific, and, you know, here's the thing, too, uh, you know, honestly, I think, I think we line up closer than I initially thought, because I thought that you would be in the, yeah, let's do it camp, um, so, well, I like to keep people on their toes, yeah, <laughs> so, like, because my, my thing about it is my, the morals, for me, it's not correct to do, not because, like, oh, God has chosen them for extinction, but, like, because... Yeah, we're not doing the Jeff Goldblum. No, movie. it's just because it's it's something that's gone. You're never going to get it back in the form that it was gone in. Like, even if we can resurrect the mammoth, like you said, what what is going to teach the mammoth to be a mammoth and not just a weird elephant that thinks... Or not just a weird... Not just, well, uh, even, not just a hairy elephant, essentially. Well, not even if you know the whole surrogate mother thing works you're talking about an animal that's from a tropical jungle in cap or into captivity where people caring for it and you know all that into and you're going to take it from that to an environment where there's nobody around right for 
mile, it's going to be one hell of a sh uh, system shock. Well, sure. I mean, I would imagine that they would... If, if I was okay with it happening, I think what how it should happen is that it should be a total captivity type thing or it should be a managed population in Siberia well, it'll or some place be a captive uh breeding program right in order to get to the not point really where it's going to be a way to uh like i said to integrate them in back into the natural ecosystem right unless you've got because what i you know and a lot of people scientists speculate paleontologists speculate that mammoth culture was very much like elephant culture but we don't know if it was exactly. So what's our best bet to do? We take the baby mammoths. If you know, we we breed boil down to a population where we use back breeding to get to the point where we've made something that looks close enough to a mammoth. Now we've got populations of those, and they've been being raised in elephant culture. So they already have elephant culture. But now we take that population and then we put it onto a managed like wildlife preserve that would be more ethical in my opinion now is it ethical to take something that's been dead for you know more than four thousand years now and bring it back to life or not and, and you know it's not like jurassic park where it would be like instantaneous it would be a it, it'd be a process it'd be a very slow process where these animals would have uh, to be did they ever say which type of mammoth are they looking at doing or was it just the standard woolly mammoth as in general i think it was just the standard woolly mammoth in general uh the latest article that i found is the cnn uh 2021 article from sep or yeah from uh september 13th of 2021 and um it, it focuses basically on it, it's a genetics company called colossal um and they want to resurrect the mammoth and it, it doesn't really state which mammoth and also they also say that you know the goal isn't to clone a mammoth obviously it'd be very hard to clone a mammoth because the, all the dna that we have is actually we have uh... I, we've got decent dna but there's still you know it's still fragmented in pieces it's not like as well, bad as some species. Uh, I mean, the frozen baby mammoth carcass would probably, uh, if there's any DNA viable from that, would be the, probably the best start. And I know that we have uh, adult, both male and female mammoths that have been frozen in permafrost that was still had eggs and sperm. Yeah. Um, I mean, that would be the best bet. If you were to try to... Yeah, if you were going to try to... That way, you would still be producing a full-blooded mammoth. However, the female Asian elephant would still be a surrogate mother. Right. She would just have to carry it. The thing is, we don't know how long that trimester is going to be. The, well, you mean the gestation. Well, just... Well, same, same thing. No, trimester means the first three months of a pregnancy. That's why it's called a trimester. Oh, okay. <laughs> a gestation period is the entire length of, of the pregnancy. Okay, well, I'm, I'm a male, so I don't know these things yeah but that's biology i must have skipped that class <laughs> anyway so where i was going with that it would be more ethical to do it slowly to do it through backbreeding instead of trying to either a clone or b take uh you know frozen sperm and frozen egg of of mammoths implant the fertilized egg into a into a asian elephant that would be i think that's highly Ill, unethical i understand that um uh oh uh, what's it called forced uh forced fertilization happens like in the world but generally that's between two of the same species that's not like a mammoth and an elephant yeah those are completely different right. uh branches of the tree like we don't know exactly what the the what the baby mammoth you know developing inside the elephant's body would do to it and you know what if it would be too big to give birth to i what, don't think it would be too large or, or what if they have to do like a c-section to get it out or what if there are complications with the pregnancy well that's just pregnancy in general right or what happened but... and you know and and it you were you also touch on another really good point is if you have the surrogate mother where are you going to keep them are you going to keep them in a temperate climate? Well, then that's uncomfortable for the mammoth. Are you going to keep them well, in a... Well, I was actually thinking about that. Is San Diego Zoo mm -hmm. has polar bears. Yeah. However, their polar bears being bred in captivity doesn't produce the fat layer and the giant winter coat, 
like a normal uh, wild polar bear. Right. So they're going to be climatized to that environment. Now they still probably get hot because they still have that. Yeah, they'll still black skin. A woolly in mammoth. A, uh, um, you know the heavy fat layer I'm and the dense to, coat. In the yeah, the denser coat. But we don't. They're not going to be complete. You no. Know, oh, it has to go straight into the uh, the tundra. Right. They're going to because they were created in captivity. They're going to be climatized to whatever environment we raise them in. Yeah. Well, which, uh, that, that 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 would happen over generations. That wouldn't that wouldn't be an instantaneous thing. Like you're talking about the the polar bears at the San Diego Zoo. That's because they they've had generations of breeding there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, uh, it, that doesn't. That wouldn't now, happen immediately. That that's another yeah, ad, that's another yeah. adaptation. Yeah. So the, you would almost you'd have to like I said use back breeding almost to the to thing get is, to the back point. Back breeding wouldn't work either because right then the it's just Asian a, elephants are their own separate right tree. And, then, and then it's just a modified elephant a heavily modified elephant it's not technically a mammoth. It's nowhere even near a mammoth. Right, it's like uh, it's its own. Uh, Thing. Or it's like um, uh, the Chickenosaurus, which you know we could theoretically make. We can make a Chickenosaurus, but like, why would you want to? Why would we want to make a Chickenosaurus? Nobody asked for this. <laughs> now, instead of recreating these animals like mammoth, if you take that technology and use it towards uh, existing species. I honestly think that's more of an ethical thing that right. or, we humans have caused the problem and here's the technology to fix the problem. Or species that have we have directly influenced the extinction of like thylacine. Uh, and I don't think the thylacine will be feasible easy, feasible because they were pretty much shot yeah. and then thrown away. It's hard to find DNA for thylacine. However, the northern white rhino, yeah. that one is a probably a very lot um that one probably is the best bet to be honest so uh because we still have frozen uh sperm and egg in uh our frozen zoos which is basically you know ha yeah uh, the banks that zoos keep right we've have uh i think we still have is it one or two uh still living on the planet i think it's two I think, uh, I think they're both males, though. I think, actually, I think they're both old females. I think okay. the male died, like, two years ago. That's right. Yeah, uh, no, you're right. But those animals would be much easier to introduce into that environment. Right, because they didn't because they that long ago. Well, not only that, but they're basically just a very closer subspecies to the white rhino and just happens to be another country. Sure. Where woolly mammoth and Indian elephants or African elephants, depending on which one they want to go with, are vastly different. So do you? So I w I'll ask the question: In terms of prehistoric species, you you would be against? Yes, I would be against uh, it because in any scenario, if you can give me the give me a scenario you where you would be okay with it. Perfect scenario, in order to one hundred percent raise it correctly and produce a viable population of animals then yes i think it would be a lovely idea even re-released back into yeah even if you can manage that however the way the world is and the way the world's going is not going to be viable you mean just because of human influence uh human influence uh is a big factor or do you uh, mean because of like poaching well, you have poaching, you have uh, pop, uh, our effect on the earth, it's just self. Uh, I mean, these animals came from a much colder climate. Yeah. As we know, the earth is warming up. However, that's a normal cycle, but we aren't helping it uh, any better. Pop, uh, pollution, higher population, carbon di uh, dioxide on the rise from cutting trees. All these problems, which are causing the permafrost to, uh, you know, go extinct, basically. And now you're wanting to throw a mammoth to try to fix it? It's not going to work. Right. What about uh, for, for scientific purposes? To fill in our scientific journal are on you... the woolly mammoth, mm -hmm. 
would be an absolutely knowledge bound uh, adventure. However, is this actually how they act or is this a product that we cost? Right, that we created. Uh, but I mean, just it, it, as, as far as like anatomy and biology goes. Well, which well, we know anatomy, we know a lot know about a lot about because we have b a great bones uh samples and we have frozen specimens. Uh, specimens so the coloration of their fur how big they get what's the difference between males and females we have all that yeah. information the only thing we're missing is behavioral and we won't know if that was actual behavioral uh from a mammoth or is that the copy of an elephant raised in captivity right now that's something else that because you know everybody likes to get into the nature versus nurture side of the argument but you know uh your genetics do influence your behaviors we know that now we know that genetic it's not all about nature you, you used to think it was like 90 percent uh nurture 10 percent nature now we know it's more like 60 40 yeah um so the, in theory let's say you have a, a group of, of resurrected mammoth that were ra uh, raised with like a, a herd of elephants now they're off on their own it's like two generations later and slowly they start to lose that elephant influence and you know revert more towards their genetic there is a possibility that there is going to be some genetic memory i guess yeah uh, well would... it's not even genetic it's not technically genetic memory it's just we know now that your genetics can influence your like if you know everybody says oh i don't want to grow up to be my parents 90 percent of the time they do oh well, yeah but that's because of their genetics and the and the, the, the way they're raised even if people are raised in a completely different household you know studies have been done where they found that people who have never met like their twin uh, Still do the have the same, same tendencies as their twin or people who have never met their father have the exact same tendencies as their father which is influenced by the genetics so you know in theory if you can get away from the nurture side with the elephants if you can get far enough derived which we would never see in our lifetime obviously we're talking generations from now yeah we're talking about like 10, 10 15, 15 generations, generations. If you can get far enough away from that, there's a very good possibility of getting something that is 95% accurate to what is gone now. Yeah. Um, and this kind of also ties into the uh, Orox mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. resurrection project that happened during World War II with yeah. the Hex Brothers. Yeah. Uh, they produced an animal called the Heck Cattle. Yes. It looks like old uh, illustrations of an Orox. It has the temper of an aurochs, but it's still just, but it's a, domestic still just cow. a big old cow. It's still just a domestic cow. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I that, that kind of opens up another can of worms. Do you think that it should be our duty to bring back species that have been my, even mildly influenced by humans to go extinct? Because if you think, because if you believe that, then you almost have to agree with Mammoth Resurrection because obviously you know we did not call nobody really knows why the, but we know that the last few populations of mammoths that were living in siberia and living on what was the island i don't remember the nine we know that they died out basically because of human influence uh so, the last population of mammoth went extinct uh and like you said the eastern siberia when we were building pyramids in, yeah so like uh, three thousand years ago so two thousand years ago since that was such a remote area, I can't honestly say that, yes, humans were the cause. Or yeah, was but there, it because there, there were still of, people there. Well, there's people everywhere. I'm just saying, That's uh, what point. I'm saying is, was it just pe because of people? Was it because of uh, a natural disease? Was it uh, because of global temperatures just happening to uh, do a flex right there? We don't know. Sure. The thing is, would you want to put your... Uh, an animal that you put all this time, effort, and uh, money in to create in a situation where you're just going to roll the dice and see what happens? Well, I think this that you can only release them into the wild after a couple of generations, and then, of course, they'd have to be very closely monitored. It would almost be like a preserve. It would have to be some sort of preserve. It would have preserve. to be a natural uh, park or something. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's basically, look at, you know, what is the wild it's either popular human population agriculture land or a state park yeah 
there's no real wild anymore. Yeah, there's no wild left. Hasn't been uh, since probably uh, colonial times. Well, no, I'd, I would disagree with that. I'd say not since the early 20th century. Um, but that that would be what around World War World War One. One, yeah, mm-hmm. early 20th century. Um, so, I think that if you if you line up along the lines of oh well, humans made this happen, then humans should try to fix it. Then you almost have to agree with resurrecting the mammoth because there the, a lot of research has been done that points to humans as not a, a culprit as of a culprit, not right. the not not gun. the smoking gun. But we don't have the smoking gun, so at this point in uh to be honest i think i can kind of figure out how okay it's the end of the ice age climate's warming up Mm -hmm. well mammoths need tundra and grasslands Mm -hmm. well when the temperature is warming up force takes over the population is already at all-time low Mm -hmm. you have humans coming in to the areas hunting yeah now we don't know if they were doing a uh massive herd hunt right which is running them off like a cliff or in, individuals or an individual hunt which the human population is very tiny right however with the human population come dogs dogs carry uh diseases in their crap that you know if an elephant were to or an even domesticated uh animals nowadays uh, would come in contact probably would carry diseases that sure. could interact with uh, ba- very badly with the animals. Uh, like I said, you had temperature differences, you had lack of food, you had humans, you have these new diseases coming into the area with uh, brought with humans or without the humans because we, we found that horses and stuff were coming into Europe over the land bridge through North America. Mm-hmm. So you had all these interactions going on with uh, a very fragile ecosystem already on the brink of uh, collapse. It's basically just like the uh, Isla Nublar debate we had um, a while back. You're having all these strenuous activities on this area. Yeah, it's more of a continent wide instead of a small island, mm-hmm. but it's still there yeah um but see something that again this is me trying to be consistent in the thought process you you refer to humans as part of the problem so therefore is it now our duty to fix that problem okay well the uh thing is with your logic with that you're taking and yeah they're humans however at that time humans were literally like one step above a chimp at that time what at 2000 years ago no really the last ice age was 10,000 years ago yeah and no humans were way more evolved than one stage above a, a chimp are you kidding me at that point human evolution buddy we were modern humans like 300,000 years ago I don't know what you're talking about genuinely that's a really piss poor argument <laughs> like modern man became derived well i mean homo sapien you're talking about at physically yes yes and mentally you're telling me that uh humans at ten thousand years ago was on the same wavelength as we are now yes absolutely 100 percent and why did we uh lead all these animals to extinction then uh, because we because still we didn't know better. No, because we had to eat. I, I'm saying that the human population was so small at that time. People, You're expecting okay, but people then that a small handful of people, probably less than a couple thousand, uh, caused the extinction. Of it's a, not less than a couple thousand. At ten thousand years ago, the human really? population is actually expanding quite rapidly. Plus, you have nothing. You have other subspecies, if you well, of Neand- you have Neanderthal. Yes. Uh, which was in the Middle East in parts of Asia. And Europe. You had the lower part. No. They weren't all Asia. Yeah, they were. They were all over Europe. You gotta you gotta brush up on your human evolution history. I think I've found the weak point. So, uh, after a quick Google search, search. Yes, Carl, you are right. Yes, I was correct about all the previous statements. And I also realized that Denisovans were also in the area around the same time. Well, the lower part of Russia. Right, the lower part of Russia. But again, that's still be putting pressure on uh, the species. Well, since we don't know really much about the Denisovans. Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, I don't think we can honestly say for a fact that they were hunting mammoths. 
I mean, I mean, we have very small teeth fragments, right. so you can't really. But if they, that if, up. They, if they were close to modern humans, we know that modern both modern humans and Neanderthal hunted the mammoth, the the megafauna of the time, specifically mammoth. So if they were anything like our, you know, their cousins, then we we can make the assumption that they were probably doing that. Or were they hunting a, a different elephant species? Right. Again, we don't know, but it still drives the point that, uh, you know, humans were kind of all over the place by this point. Like we were all over the place in bigger populations. Homo sapien was becoming incredibly prevalent, especially in Europe and in in uh, uh, Asia Minor. Yeah, for lack of a better term, um, well, the Middle East, right? Middle East. So, at that point, so you, yes, you were correct on your statement about humans as uh, all human noise, not just humans themselves, right? Were a lot higher in population than I thought. Yes. So, y congratulations. The smoking gun. Then I, I guess it's not the smoking gun. Not but, really a smoking gun, but, but still, it's a bigger nail than. Yeah, it's I a thought. it's a it's a much bigger nail than you thought. So, would that change your argument then? Knowing that there were more human populations, more and more human species all over the map of the the the, the very last mammoth strongholds we'll talk about. You know, like Northern Europe, Siberia, Asia, places like that. Would that change your opinion at all? Um, probably not. Uh, however, because of that information that you have gave me, there are many other animals that were from, like, the age of antiquity, I guess, would probably be a lot better to produce. Okay. Because... You mean, like, aurochs? Well, you have the aurochs from, uh, Germany. That's one. But also, or there's... Like Irish elk? That's Ice Age. But, sure. But, but well, again, it's more of an Ice Age animal. But yeah, you, I guess you can kind of say Bronze Age. Too. Yeah, it was definitely Bronze, Bronze Age. Age and possibly Iron Age. Yeah. Because you have, you know, the middle... Even in, uh, like, uh, the artwork of, like, King Arthur's time, I guess. Whichever that would be. They always... They talk about the white stag... The giant stag. Right. So that, I guess that, that, that would be of, early Iron Age. Or, well, late Iron Age. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that, that's, that, that's pretty modern. You know? well, it's a lot more modern than the mammoth, but right. yeah. So what do you think about things like that? Those, I probably will have a higher chance of surviving. Well, I just meant your personal opinion. Like, do you think that's okay or not? For them? Yeah, probably. Okay. Because those are more, you know, historically knowledge focused on, yeah, humans definitely cause their extinction. Yeah, but you still run into the same problem. Like, if you do raise one or you get you find viable well, DNA. let's be honest those animals uh being released into the wild will be a far probably easier to do than uh actual woolly mammoth right but what i'm saying is because a lot of your previous argument predicated on the idea that uh there would be nothing around to teach a mammoth how to be a mammoth so what's around to teach an auric how to be an auric what's around to teach a irish elk how to be an irish elk Oh, you're you're uh, 100 percent uh, true on that. Uh, there's not. So you know, why is it more okay? I guess because as a historic uh, significance, we can actually prove that humans, without a shadow of a doubt, cause their extinction. Where with mammoth, we have so many variables that it's harder not only to pinpoint what did we, how much of an influence we did, but also just the sheer. Uh, just all the stuff that will have to go into it so regardless of the uh so for you it's all circumstantial then regardless of the challenges that it might face like i said in the beginning of this i would love to see one of these animals walk around well, don't get me wrong well that's not true it's just the <laughs> would you let me <laughs> with all the stuff that goes into it it's just a lot harder burden than it would be for some another animal you know but why it wouldn't be it's basically the How same would it not be it's basically the same it's the same scenario you're just swapping it's just a plug and play formula you're just swapping the animal if it's like let's say the oryx right you still need something to be a surrogate mother you still need something to teach it how to be an oryx you still have to release it slowly into the 
uh, environment into, you know, Europe, uh, you still have to figure out all the logistics. It's still going to be an endangered species. It's still going to be probably poached, probably hunted. I'm sure that everybody and their grandmother would want to try auric meat. It's you run into the same problems just with a different animal. I think I think your biggest hiccup and why you think we should do it uh, in some scenarios and, and, and not in other scenarios is simply because you feel that humans were the main reason for that animal's extinction. Well, what? Okay. It, it, am I am I kind of getting it? I I guess for uh, in a way is because we as humans or modern modern humans I should say Homo Homo sapien. I, I I guess that's what that's what some scientists have wanted to call modern humans. Well, or well more, humans more in sense. the more in the twentieth century. That would make more sense. Why? Well, because humans went from you know we have more access to everywhere in the world instead of just kind of walking so we're all kind of more genetically yeah but it, it, yeah but you know, you know that homo sapien just means wise man yeah i know so why would we call ourselves wise wise man it seems a because little pretentious. scientists like to name shit it <laughs> seems so pretentious because scientists like to name shit mega homo sapien <laughs> okay so so I, I want to get back to the the idea that so I was kind of getting at the right. Yes, you reason. were biting at the right bit. Okay, <laughs> if that's what you're. Getting yeah, at. That, yeah. So can you explain then? But I've already, but I've given you some circumstantial ev evidence that would point to humans being no, a prominent gave, cause. You gave uh, um, a very good uh, evidence that yes, humans were a lot more present in the environment than I thought. Right. And we know that their cultures probably had a lot to do with these animals as sacred to their cultures. Mm -hmm. The thing is, because of that time frame, that time period, we don't really know as modern modern humans, I guess you want to keep saying. Uh, we don't know, you know, we don't have that really focused, clear lens like we do with a lot of the other animals. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So, since with other species we do have a clearer lens it would make more sense to have the ability to resurrect them and even if we don't go full you know all the way to like uh antiquity or uh animals from that area as well but more modern extinctions like the northern white rhino that those are the ones i was focused on okay. more prevalent than uh, the ones that are from 10,000 or 5,000 years ago. So what's your cut That's where I was going with. So what's your cutoff date? Where you say, like, okay, this is... We uh, we can't tell anymore. Um, you saying, like, Pleistocene? Late Pleistocene? 10,000 years ago? I, I, I Five, wouldn't even go 8, that far. 8,000 years ago? Um, let's see. Probably in the last thousand. The last thousand years. Okay. That way, because we'll not only have a detailed record of the animals, uh, how they were interact with the environment. Well, we won't have a detailed record, but well, well, we have a lot better, better idea uh, on how they actually behaved and stuff. And we actually would have, ho hopefully, uh, related, close enough related animals that can uh, not only stand in for a surrogate, but also to teach them the ways of that species. Yeah, but we know, okay, so I'll go back to the mammoth then. We know that mammoths and elephants are very closely related. The DNA, what is it? It's like 93% um, similar? I do not know 100%. Okay, uh, that's taking a guess out of the top, off the top of my head. So why wouldn't uh, an elephant be a, a proper surrogate? I know we've gone through. Yeah, we, well, we're, I, tread, I've already, we're treading this. I've but... played devil's advocate for a little while, and I was like, well, you know, you could get the elephant to stand in. But why? No, we 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 would have to use an yeah, Asian elephant yeah. as a surrogate. And then you know you get into the question of would it even be the same animal because it's getting well, different. Not only that, but characteristics. Here's the thing: is Asian elephant milk uh, a good substitute for woolly mammoth milk? Right. Uh, but I, that that's kind of like getting in. You're, I think you're getting that's into more the, the nitty gritty stuff. Yeah, you're right getting now. into the weeds, or you're like uh, you're not seeing the forest for the trees, you know. You know, no. you don't. You don't know the saying. No, you, you're losing the no. No, it's basically like saying you're missing the bigger picture. I'm sorry. I like the small details. <laughs> but so, okay. 
Okay, so what exactly are you trying to get to? I'm getting at, I think it should be, I don't think it's ethical. Well, I already said that. Well, no, I mean for any extinct animal. So even if we had, say, frozen sperm and egg from an extinct, modern extinct animal, you say, just let it go. I think if, because, you know, you brought up a really good point. Uh, what's going to teach that animal to be that animal? It's never going to be the same. You're never going to get it to fill that exact same role that it filled. You're, well, my thing is, you can't. Would you even want to risk a trying to rehabilitate it into a wild situation, so then, or just keep them in captivity? So why not just keep a mammoth in captivity then? If we're just keeping the mammoth in captivity, then sure, I say yeah, we could possibly uh do a resurrection because it's just staying in captivity but if you want to try to resurrect it and then release it into siberia or even upper parts of canada then no it's there's nothing there for to actually learn to be a mammoth there's nothing to keep that population in check once they become wild so because you once you release them you're gonna have to try to do what to save your tiger to keep them in check i mean Right, but last time I checked, we never got a saber tooth cat um, in permafrost. I think, I think the the argument. See, this is this is why I like to do thought exercises because I always like to keep my my arguments consistent with my beliefs. And so my, I think my biggest belief is that even if it's in captivity, it's not going to be the same because we we the only reason. To bring back animals that we had that we have really good records of in like say the ice age because everybody always likes to talk about the ice age well it's that or dinosaurs right and that's basically not possible at this point at this point but it probably won't be possible ever <laughs> to be honest but you well if you had a really fast rocket and a big enough you, telescope, you could see them but you won't be able <laughs> to bring any of them back <laughs> yeah right but so what i'm saying is uh in order for my argument to be consistent, which I believe that the only purpose of bringing back these animals would be scientific research to understand their behaviors, because we already know their anatomy, we already know the environment they were living in, we already know the type of foods they were eating, we already know, we basically know everything about them except those very small details. specific species uh, details. Yeah. So there's no point in trying to resurrect a mammoth because it will not be a mammoth. There's no point in trying to resurrect a cave lion because it will not be a cave lion. It will be, it will look like a cave lion. It will sound like a cave lion. No, it would be a cave lion. It just wouldn't act like exactly. An that, that, cave that's lion. what I was getting at. It would be, it would be, it would look like it. It would sound like it. It would walk like it. It would run like it. But every interaction that it had with any other speed, any other environmental environmental factor would not be the same as a cave lion. Yeah, that's so. There's no point. Yeah, and it that then brings me to the argument that now i have to stay consistent with that logic logic oh my goodness i have to stay you're, consistent you're a little tired. i'm a little tired i have to stay consistent with that logic that there's no point so what's the point of bringing back an extinct animal that's already gone from its environment if we already know everything about it well, and the, the environment has already adapted past the, the point environment of needing has, that environment now, or needing that animal if the environment has already fulfilled that niche yeah with something else then yeah the don't even try even if even but if, what i'm saying is if a modern extinct animal species dies out from either human mostly human uh influence nowadays and the environment is still missing that niche then it is a opportunity for humans to fix that wrong no, I disagree because I think that evolution will do what it does best and fill that niche over time. Before, even after though the, even uh, though we messed it up, uh, goes to shit. I mean, eventually the the Earth is just gonna shake us off like a bunch of fleas. So, oh, I wish for the day. So I'm I'm saying that no matter because I'm I I think about everything in terms of geologic time. In terms of geologic time, we we are living. So in, what you're saying is everything's balanced as it should be. Yeah, it, 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 life will find a way. <laughs> no, but life will, life will 
fulfill that niche we've seen it before we've seen the earth go through stages where you know 95 percent of all species were wiped off the face of the planet by You're talking about the um, the permian, permian extinction, extinction where it you know and the, then the triassic extinct minor extinction pretty much did the same thing right and then the and then the you know every ecological niche for a while was filled by like one derivation of uh of basically rats for almost two hundred thousand years before and then it, mammals diversified exactly into, and now look at the diversity well, you have so my my whole argument is that no matter how bad things get even though we might feel awful that we did this to these species they're gone let nature do its thing let them but how can you let nature do its thing if we keep poking it like i said eventually it's just going to shake us off like a bunch of fleas so we cannot we cannot mess it up to the point of no return there is no way humans can mess up the earth to the point of no return we have had I mean, periods. I mean, you had an asteroid smack it uh, that's 65 what I'm million years, and yet here we are. Having, exactly. Today, that's what I'm saying. Like, no matter how bad humans mess this world up, even in like nuclear fallout, we've seen in areas like Chernobyl where animals have populated that that area, and it's become in, absolutely flourished with biodiversity. Of uh, course, all the animals. Pigs, you know, dogs of and... course, the animals have like three eyes and six tails, but. It, that just radiation uh, difference. Yeah, that's just the that would get eventually that goes out. away. So well, hopefully. <laughs> so my idea is that no matter how bad things get, even if we feel really bad about this species, we shouldn't not, we shouldn't try to resurrect it because then it almost feels like uh, a get out of jail free card. Right, like we can just do this anytime we want instead of doing it instead of you know saying like oh wow we really messed up with the thylacine we probably shouldn't do that anymore it's like oh well we killed them all oh well you know what we'll just we'll just make some we'll more just eventually dust off the uh the dna card and pop it in exactly and so another one it, it almost makes the extinction feel less impactful especially when it was directly man made man caused by men like dodo birds like the great onk yeah yeah the great onk or uh um Thylacines. Thylacines. You had, um, the blue buck from South Africa. The uh, right. quagga from South Africa. Exactly. Like when when humans do this, and we know that it happens, it almost feels less impactful. And I think it almost has to happen for people. If people want to continue living on this earth, we have to learn our lessons. And if we can just say, "Oh, well, we killed them all. We'll make some new ones," that takes that's away from. That's not really learning the lesson. That's not learning the lesson. That's just fixing a mistake. That's like that's a small bandage on a big boo boo. Exactly, it doesn't actually fix the problem. It, it makes us feel better because we say, "Oh well, we we made them go extinct, but look, now we've got like six in captivity. Look, they're still alive." No, that that's not the same. Yeah, this not. isn't even close, and it just feels like it 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 completely takes away from the gravity of the situation. Yeah, extinction should hurt. Exactly. Well, yeah, the extinction should hurt. So, uh, is there anything else you want to add to this kind of uh, sad moment? <laughs> well, I'd like to ask if uh, my monologue has changed your opinion at all. Do you think that we should still resurrect extinct species, even if they're modern? After the way you put it, uh, no. I, I honestly think, like you said, extinction should hurt. It should hurt. Right. Um, if you're in a museum and you see you know, a taxidermy animal and you know for a fact that there ain't none in captivity there's none in the wild and this is the last thing that you this is this is it this that's taxidermy specimens that's all that's it no you should definitely feel something there yeah you should feel even yet yeah, you yourself didn't cause it you as a species you gotta learn should do better yeah this is kind of going hey you fucked up here try harder next time yeah it's not a it's not a try again button which well, let's not let's redo this it's more of a you, you know like you said you messed it up you, you fucked up uh don't do it again yeah learn, but learn as your lesson. humans do they don't really learn that well right and i think my biggest the well i you know come that's arguing from a moral perspective but also arguing from a scientific perspective i think that let nature do what it does best let it fill those niches on its own you know populations might go crazy but it's not our job to control populations we've never done it until now when we started to try to do it we've never well i mean we we have to we've domesticated animals and we've controlled populations historically but in terms of 
geologic but that was, time, again, small scale. Right. In terms of geologic time, we've never controlled populations. We've never said like this animal has to survive. In the in the past, species have gone extinct and they're gone and they're forgotten and new species emerge all the time. It'll happen so, again, even if we mess it up. Going back to the whole resurrection thing. Okay. And I just kind of off topic, but we kind of already shipped that uh, a few times. We already jumped that shark a few times. Um, what do you think of breeding programs for extinct animals in zoos then? Is it a waste of time or is it kind of just prolonging the inevitable? I think it's prolonging the inevitable, inevitable, but it's in a way it's okay because they're not totally extinct. Well, they're not. Yeah, they weren't totally extinct to begin with. So they're, they're still technically on the earth. We still technically have them, but uh, it, it is a bit of just prolonging the inevitable, I would say. And I don't think we should the ones that we have, we shouldn't let go. You know, you can keep those around as a, another reminder instead of like you were talking about the taxidermed specimen sitting in a, in a museum yeah. somewhere. This is a living, breathing animal that you can look at and be like, that is beautiful. And then the tour guide says, yeah, and these are the only ones in existence. And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, so I think you can use populations like that as examples for learning as well. And again, since they're not in the wild, you're already starting to let nature really do its thing and start to repopulate those areas well, with new the species. Reason, uh, so why I bring it up, I'm is okay with that. Kind of like the American bison. Yeah, you know, it's a big success story with the uh, repopulating after uh, the United States government pretty much put a bounty on their head. Right. For like what five dollars a pop? Yeah, or something like that. Um. But we went from literally, you know, millions of bison mm -hmm. to literally a handful of a couple hundred. Now we're in a couple thousands. See, and I, I like think that, that I, again, I think that's okay because they never fully went extinct in the wild. It wasn't a, it wasn't a question of like. But like, they were replaced ecologically in the environment with cattle. So. Right. But that was, that where, was, where do you, that, that's a human thing. We like cattle didn't naturally evolve out of like the last few populations of bison if you know cattle came from europe exactly so that was like a human placed replacement for that ecological niche niche i think it's okay i don't think that's okay i think that once the population is gone then nature should do what it does best i don't think humans should try to replace replace that species with something else because then you're just messing it up more yeah okay at, at that point you you've you've decided to write one wrong with another wrong instead of even trying to like write it with a somewhat right mm -hmm. you've just said like okay well this is dead well we know we need like a big uh four hooved uh right. critter that eats grass and browses low vegetation okay let's put cows in there and now all of a sudden you've got cows in that environment and you didn't let nature take its course and instead and it's kind of like just shitting excuse the language it's kind of just shitting on the legacy of what came before or what was before because now you've you've artificially replaced it it's not it, it wasn't a natural process it was something that we decided to do to try to right a wrong again it's still the thing where it's like well okay we made thylacine go extinct but what's kind of close to thylacine I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, Spotted claw. yes, but yeah, we can bring those in and we can use those or, uh, what's kind of close to a dodo bird. I don't know. Uh, flightless, uh, I can't think of any flightless birds off the top of my head. Actually, the closest one is the knickerbar pigeon. There you go. That's the closest genetically linked to, uh, to dodo. So you bring that in, you put it on the island and then you're like, okay, we fixed it, but it's not fixed. It's no, because it's you're taking worse. a flying bird to replace a slowly over ev thousands of evolutions and generations to a flightless fat ass right but again it's, it's which literally is the translation of dodo yes. it means fat ass bird <laughs> but it's 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 still the 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 gray area is then like wow okay we not only did we mess it up but we brought in something else to try to fix that mistake but we could potentially mess it up more so no i think that in in the case with bison it was different obviously because those that population was still living there was still a population yeah so all all we did was all we did was protect it and help it to let it to let it do its thing 
we See stepped what I'm away and let Bison take. We uh, we stepped away and let Bison be Bison, and you know say like, hey, you can't hunt these, you can't shoot them, you can't just let them do their thing, and they did their thing, and now look at what's happening. Great success story. Uh, a fast growing livestock market and a conservation success story. Yeah, exactly, and that's because we didn't mess with it too much. Well, we did, but then we kind of let nature take its course. Exactly. Like, we, we messed it up, and then we said, okay, you know what? Hands off. I think um, what really ties in this, and as a conclusion, okay, uh, is the line in The Lost World, where John Hammond's like, you know, trust in nature and let and just step aside and let yeah animals do what they've done for thousands of years without humans without human uh, intervention they've been fine why are we so self-important that we think that we need to constantly modify or help or hinder different species when it's been happening naturally naturally for for millions of of years before we were even a blink in the eye of geologic time especially because it's I could keep going, but that, I think that's a good conclusion is yeah. to wrap it up with John, John Hammond's. Hammond's. We don't need to, to, we just need to protect yeah. these animals and let them live and then cut to the pteranodon. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So this is Josh. And this is Carl. Signing off. Bye.